Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is February 23rd, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. In a desperate attempt to cling to patriarchal ideas, abortion restrictions are multiplying across the country and the U.S. Supreme Court will consider a case that could overrule Roe v. Wade, the 1973 ruling that established a constitutional right to abortion. Although the U.S. is moving backwards, other countries are riding the wave to advance humanity. Having an abortion is no longer a crime under Colombian law. On Monday, Colombia's constitutional court ruled to decriminalize abortion, a decision that paves the way for the procedure to become widely available across the conservative Catholic country. The ruling follows years of organizing by women across Latin America for greater protections and more rights, including access to abortion. Mexico's Supreme Court decriminalized abortion in September and Argentina's Congress legalized the procedure in late 2020. Colombia's decision means that three of the four most populous countries in Latin America have now opened the door to more widespread access to abortion. What does this mean for women? Well, at least in Latin America, women are now aware that they have dominion over their bodies. And if they feel the need to have the procedure, they can do so safely without fear of retribution. Nothing says I respect you like allowing a woman to make a decision for herself. Thank you so much, Columbia. In other news, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem passed the year's first anti-transgender bill earlier this month. The bill bars transgender girls from playing on girls' sports teams and is the 10th law of its kind to pass in three years. Arizona, Indiana, and Alabama are promoting bills that would limit the rights of transgender children, while Florida, ever special governors, publicly supports a bill that would ban talking about sexual orientation and gender identity in schools, and it would require schools to inform parents if a child mentions either of these issues. With all of the cap crime happening within the capital and around the nation, why is barring transgender girls from playing on girls' sports teams such a hot topic? Today we have trans activist Tori Robbins, who has offered to share her opinion on the matter. Tori, welcome to the feisty. Please tell us, what was your reaction to the news that this anti-trans bill was passed in South Dakota? Well, Tierka, thank you for having me on the feisty today. I'm so excited. Um, I basically feel like uh, this, this, basically this um, conversation about trans girls being on sports teams is almost very, uh, how can I say this, very draining and very tiring. And I feel like we have better issues to speak about. I also feel like this whole conversation kind of... Um, is making especially trans kids not human and not kids it's kind of like the well the conversation that i've seen around it is basically that well they shouldn't be in these sports because they're biologically stronger which yes um if we're talking about layman medicals terms someone born biologically male is stronger than somebody but that's not always the case for everybody i know plenty of cis women who can destroy me in any sport so i think it's kind of um and again we're talking about children kids um i think it's kind of a bit delusional and a bit um almost making them seem like these these kids have superpowers when they do not they're kids but you know i understand tori well tell us what message would you like to send to those who have made passing this law a priority um i feel like we have way better things to do than um basically i feel like antagonizing trans kids making them putting them in a different space we speak so much about anti-bullying and this that and the third but then you're making these laws to basically you know discriminate against these kids and again you don't have any basis on this and then too on top of it 
if we're keeping it really real, being trans is a minority on top of a minority. There's there's not too many there's there, there's not too many trans folks in the world compared to other um, uh, groups of people. So it's like I, I don't know what y'all expect. Like a whole group of trans people are just gonna come and like take over the sports world, or I should say trans kids, I guess in this sense. But I say to them, we have way bigger bigger things to worry about. Um, where the economic standpoint we're in right now is horrible. People need housing. People need good health care. People need uh, food. It, people, we, we need to worry about those things and not worry about the babies playing sports. That's, that's just how I feel about it. There's, there's so many more important things. Thank you so much, Tori, for sharing your time and opinions with us today. As feminists, we stand together for equality for all. In other news, the equal pay fight for the Soccer Federation began almost six years ago when five star players filed a complaint with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission accusing U.S. soccer of wage discrimination. In 2020, a federal judge dismissed the players' equal pay arguments, stripping them of nearly all of their legal leverage. The obstacles surmounted, but the women persisted. The persistence paid off. A group of several dozen current and former players that include some of the world's most popular and decorated athletes will share $24 million in payments from the U.S. soccer. The bulk of that figure is back pay. You know, compensation for the men's and women's teams have been unequal for years. The most incredible and historical fact about this very moment is that the U.S. Soccer Federation, which manages both the women and men's national teams, now pledge to equalize pay in all competitions, including the World Cup. Wow, I can see it now. Men of all nationalities training hard to get six pack abs, buying the most expensive gray sweatpants, trimming their beards to perfection, hanging outside of the soccer fields, licking their lips and looking sexy so they can hook a millionaire lady baller. Warning ladies, choose wisely. You know when they think you have some money, they're gonna try to have your baby and lock you down. <laughs> Congratulations to the women of the U.S. Soccer Federation on winning this fight for equality. Who is the sexiest woman in sports today? What would the country be like if Michelle Obama became president? Answer to these exciting questions and more right after the break. Don't miss it. Hi, everyone. My name is Coco. I'm the founder of Coco Face Yoga. Face Yoga is a great natural solution to regain or maintain your youthful appearance. We wake up sleeping muscle in the face to lift up the face and relax overworking muscle for wrinkle reduction. AKA, it can be natural alternative to Botox or plastic surgery. At the age of 27, I had a plastic surgery failure, which made me realize that I should have done some natural solutions like face yoga. Then I started studying it, started teaching it, and then it's a big business. We offer the service tutorials through our face yoga app, social media, including TikTok and YouTube, private session, group session, and certification. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? The sexiest woman in sports today is fighting back after facing criticism for what she wore on the court. Last week, Texas A&M University basketball coach Sydney Carter made headlines when she posted a picture of herself while coaching a basketball game. She was wearing a white turtleneck, pink leather pants, and stilettos. A horde of haters swarmed her social media to complain that they found her outfit to be inappropriate. Really? They were sad and angry that they had a full front of view of what a sex successful black woman looks like. Confronted by body goals that they will never achieve, these trolls lashed out at Coach Carter, attempting to shame her, but was instead met with the finger. Coach Carter didn't care. 
This is a woman who played basketball at Texas A&M University, was drafted by the Chicago Sky in the WNBA in 2020 before she became a coach at her alma mater. She said she always dresses up for games and posts pictures of herself on social media. She's been seen wearing skirts, with suits, with fun prints and dresses, posted it all on Instagram. But it seems like these pink pants, they made all the girls tremble in fear. How dare she have a natural butt like that? How dare she walk like a magic stallion in a male dominated industry? What they were really thinking? I don't wanna look at her because then I have to turn around and look at me. Squats, do some squats. Instead of exercising your fingers on your phone so much, do some squats. Carter is a threat in those pink leather pants. If they think so, they better not ever come to New Orleans or they will curl up and die from hatred. Half the women in New Orleans look just like that. We do. <laughs> in other news, we have another fascinating report from Yasmin streaming from London with the Patriarchy Watch. Hey Yasmin, keep us up to date on the Patriarchy's evil doings. What's going on this week? <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Yasmin with the Patriarchy Watch again, highlighting the harmful effects of our patriarchal society. In 2020, a controversial court ruling in Poland removed fetal abnormalities as grounds for abortion. As a result, there have been high profile tragedies since the ruling came into force. Last month, a woman died after doctors refused to perform the procedure after the heartbeat of her twins stopped. Her death followed that of another woman last September in similar circumstances. Women whose fetuses are suffering from abnormalities or those with unwanted pregnancies are regularly forced to travel to countries like Germany and the Netherlands for terminations. Those who cannot afford it contact charities. In the years since the tribunal ruling, Abortion Support Network charity has helped thousands. The women arrive in countries where they cannot understand the language and are trusting strangers with their fate. For many, it's a terrifying ordeal. Moving on into our second case. Last week, a very powerful man has paid a lot of money to avoid going to court to face the accusations made against him. That man is Prince Andrew II, son of Queen Elizabeth II. Andrew has been accused of child sex abuse by Virginia Dufferay, who as a minor was sex trafficked to him by American financier and convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, which Andrew has denied. Following the intense negative reaction to his connection to Epstein, he permanently resigned from public roles in May 2020, and his honorary military affiliations and royal charitable patronages were returned to the Queen in January 2022. He was the defendant in a civil lawsuit over sexual assault filed by Dufre in New York State, which was settled out of court last week. Our third case involves a man who was arrested as he was in the process of dismembering his girlfriend's body with a machete. Nicholas Scuria was taken into custody by police early on Friday morning in Clifton Heights, five miles west of Philadelphia. Police rushed to the scene after being called in the middle of the night by Scuria's next door neighbor at 4.40 a.m. after hearing screaming and loud bangs coming through the walls. Later, Scuria told police that the couple who shared the apartment together had got into a fight after their relationship had ended. The police report states, during the argument he knocked the victim unconscious after reportedly striking her in the face and the head areas before trying to hide and dismember her corpse. Once authorities were able to gain entry, they witnessed the suspect attempting to decapitate the already deceased victim using a machete. Scuria has been charged with first degree murder, third degree murder, criminal position of a weapon and abuse of a corpse. Thank you for tuning in to the Patriarchy Watch. I'm Yasmin, keeping my eyes wide open for women's progress. Follow me on Instagram at Dismantle the Patriarchy for a wider view. Back to you, T. Erica.
Thank you, Yasmin, for watching out for all of us by keeping your eyes on patriarchy and making us aware. Please come back with more news as soon as you can. We recently celebrated President's Day in the U.S. And in thinking about our presidents, our awesome first ladies came to mind, especially Michelle Obama. The former first lady has been voted the most admired woman in the U.S. three years in a row. So it just wasn't us. You know? A YouGov poll published in December surveyed 42,000 people in 38 countries and found that Michelle Obama topped the list of most admired women yet again. 71% of respondents said they admired her the most. To commemorate this year's President's Day, the feisty will look to the future, a future where women have the option to become leaders. What a glorious day it will be. And what if our beloved Michelle Obama has been voted into office? What would our world be like with Michelle Obama as president? I can predict the future and I have a feeling that with Michelle taking the lead, there will be a few new laws on the books. Hello, as you know, I am Michelle Obama and I am the new president of the United States. My first act as president is to abolish democracy and declare myself to be queen. I am queen. As your new queen, I now set forth new mandates for our society. We have gone far too long struggling under the weight of social norms that we could not control. Henceforth, we now abolish the following from our society forever. No more sugar on grits. It's terrible. It doesn't make sense. No more using grocery bags as trash bags. It's classless. No more overdraft fees. If I don't have no money, why am I asked to pay more money? That don't make no sense. No more licorice whips. They're disgusting. Who made them? Who's buying them? No more struggle beards. If your beard not growing in, you've got patches, just, just cut it off. No more smiling. If you have missing side teeth, we don't want to see that. No more men under six feet tall. Off with your head. No more Fast and Furious sequels. We're tired of seeing tigers. No more coronavirus. It doesn't exist. Pret just pretend it doesn't exist. I'm tired. I want to go on vacation. I don't want to wear this mask. I just want to have a good time. I just want to live. No more calories they don't exist anymore there's no such thing as calories cookies don't have calories nothing has calories our society is now much better under these new mandates you may thank me freely and vigorously i am michelle obama the new queen of the united states <laughs> i'm in full agreement with michelle's laws which laws do you think we need in this country? Leave a comment and let us know. Thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. And remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the Feisty. feisty, feisty. Welcome to the feisty. Feisty, feisty. Welcome to the Feisty News for Women.